It's time for Atomic Monsoon with your hosts, Josh. Oh, I'm lovely, thank you. Psycho Andy. Everything sucks and we're breaking up and it's Christmas. Happy That's... holidays. And Jedi Stephanie. Oh, yeah. Awesome. That means I can go get slimed. And now, it's Atomic Monsoon. Hey, Andy. Hi, Stephanie. Yeah. <sighs> And here we are yet again to record another episode of Atomic Monsoon. Yes, the second to last episode. Oh my god, I can't believe it's already here. I know, I know. But hey, you know, before we get into this episode of Atomic Monsoon, we should thank our friends at Defm Records. We should definitely thank our friends at Defm Records, because I keep forgetting to do that, which is terrible. Uh, yeah, yeah, defmrecords.bandcamp.com, D-E-A-F-M-R-E-C-O-R-D-S dot bandcamp, B-A-N-D-C-A-M-P dot com. Uh, check them out. They they do our intro music. They do a, a whole bunch of other, a whole bunch of bands under that record label. And uh, the Defm Records All-Stars did our intro music. So please check them out and support our friends, um, especially since we won't be here to remind you after... Uh, the year is over. <laughs> but yeah, no, schedules and things happen so that we're recording on a day we don't normally record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I can pull back the curtain a little bit, we're actually recording this the day after we recorded the episode with Ray Stacanas about too many cartoons. So uh, we're we're all kinds of thrown off. But we have a special guest this week. And Andy, who is this special guest? Because I believe uh, you are acquainted with this fellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brandon Mayo, say hello. Hi. I'm Brandon Mayo. Uh, Brandon and I are the co-creators of the online comic series Hawk and Croc, which you can check out at hawkandcroc.com. And we thought, you know, I've mentioned this show on Atomic Monsoon uh, before, but uh, we've never really talked about it. So we thought, you know, before the show's over, we should have Brandon on and, and Stephanie can ask us a bunch of questions and we will tell you everything you want to know. Uh, so... <laughs> I, I don't know about you, Brandon, but I don't know if there's any way we can really talk about this series without giving a whole bunch of spoilers for stuff at this point. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. So I think anyone who's interested uh, who has not done so yet, please head over to hawkandcroc.com. And by the time you hear this, everything should be back up. We did have some server issues uh, earlier this month, but we're we're working on getting everything back up and go read everything. That's true. And there are... There are hundreds of comic strips that date back to 2003 yeah yeah i i did a quick count this morning and i think it comes out to like 730 pages oh my god that's a lot yeah <laughs> yeah but like brandon said we've been doing this since 2003 so we've had uh we've had some time well all right you guys ready to be interviewed because andy i know you interviewed me and my husband Connor, when we talked about Syndicate Saber, but are you ready to be interviewed about Hawk and Croc? Oh, man, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I think we should just start, you know, at the beginning. But how did you guys come up with Hawk and Croc? Um, okay, so I have my answer. But uh, Brandon, I've never heard your side of this story. So how how would you say that that we began the, the decision and, and the creation of Hawk and Croc? Basically, I knew he was into art, and I was into writing stupid things. And so our interests coincided in that way. Yeah, um, I, I was wanting to do... I, I was just wanting to make comics, which is an interest I've had, you know, since I started reading them uh, in the early 90s. And, and Brandon was writing some kind of ridiculous fan fiction stuff. So I was like, <laughs> hey, I'm I'm bad at writing, but I want to make stuff. So... Uh, what do you think about making a comic together is kind of, I mean, that's, that's my side of it at least. Right. And um, it didn't really start out in my mind as action oriented more as I just wanted to write dumb jokes and really juvenile humor that honestly, I didn't have the idea of making it for an audience in particular. I just wanted to mess around <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just have fun. Uh huh. Um, but then, but then, as, as we uh, we just kind of just started creating new characters and using character ideas we had already, and characters that we created for dumb joke reasons ended up getting developed further, and we just ended up 
having big storylines that we didn't really plan for in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think the initial thought was like, yeah, we'll just do this for a little while, like maybe a year or so. Um, we took some characters I had created. We took some characters Brandon had created and uh, Hawk being, you know, Darian Nighthawk, one of my characters and the ridiculous X croc being uh, Brandon's main character. And we were like, well, what if these two were just best friends? And we just made a comic about that and just kind of mashed everything up. Um, and, and it just sort of went from there. Like we didn't know what we were doing. Like Brandon said, it didn't start as an action series. It just started as, you know, these two roommates kind of sitting around their living room being jackasses kind of in the, the penny arcade uh, or even Beavis and Butthead vein. And as time went on, it was like, well, we've both kind of come up with the idea of these guys being heroes. So what if we kind of did that stuff too? Cool. And uh, yeah, it just sort of kept going from there. And that was 2003. Oh my God. And the last new thing we put out was in 2018. Although I will say that in 2020, we did come up with a storyline that we've decided not to release. Um, or at least I, I, I've decided I don't want to finish it, but it's, it's like half drawn and it was, going to be the death of Darian Nighthawk. Like, we were that close to ending the series. Oh, wow. We just decided, basically, that it's not a good idea with everything that's been happening in the world to yeah add more misery to it, to the world, <laughs> at this point. And especially to just close the book on everything we've been working on in that way. Mm -hmm. yeah we i, I still have I, I was going through some files uh this last the last few days and and i i have found so many like ideas and concepts for stuff that we never got around to um like we did do we did do uh like a little over 50 comics about the characters in high school i have like 100 comics basically written for them in college that we've just never done um and it, it would be a shame to we, you know, at least I kind of decided like it, it would be a shame to kill the main characters and never do those stories. Um, so because because, you know, when you know that the series is going to end it's like, well, this guy dies the end. That's it. It's never coming back. Like it's harder to go back and do any stuff that takes place in the past with with the knowledge of where it's all going to end up. Yeah, exactly. And. Especially since we did a series about Hawk and Croc's daughters in the future, and Hawk is alive there. So mm -hmm. that kind of messes with that whole thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, there, there's a story where we have uh, one of the main characters, Fire Raven, alive in the future, and then uh, we, we killed her later um, in the past or in the present day. So... Like, we've already screwed up our timeline. <laughs> and to do so again, I think, is is going to be asking a lot of our readers. So I mean, who hasn't in stories? <laughs> so, all right, cool. So, I, Andy, I know you've talked about Hawk and Croc on the show before, but for maybe our listeners who haven't heard those episodes, uh, what is Hawk and Croc about? Just, like, as best of a synopsis as you guys can give. <laughs> Uh, two best friends who are slackers that get superpowers and fight ninjas and demons. Excellent. <laughs> and also fall in love. Oh, and also fall in love. Yeah. And also make fun of people. <laughs> and also there's a train. <laughs> there is there is a train. Um Oh, and there's the there's Brandon's remarkable character, the Octocado, who's half octopus, half avocado, and all terrible. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my gosh. He will return. <laughs> he will make a comeback. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So okay, so it so obviously Andy, you so Andy, you came up with Hawk, and then uh Brandon, you came up with Croc. But I, I'm curious where I, I want to know like the origin stories of like of these characters before you guys made the comic. So I'll ask you, Brandon, first, how did you come up with Croc? Um, okay. Basically the whole reason. Okay. I had a character in mind named Croc and he's named Croc because my screen name was Croc and roll. When I was a kid, my AOL screen name, 
So I made this skinny redhead superhero named Croc and Roll. And then because I couldn't draw, I created him using the color edit mode in a fighting game. Mm -hmm. But the only character with his body type had electric powers. So he got electric powers just because of that. So I didn't know that. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, well, I guess he's got electric powers now. So there we go. And um, and then I created him a girlfriend, and I created his girlfriend a dad, and then I created him an arch rival, and then I just shoved them all into the comic like all at once because I didn't I I didn't think about pacing or character development or anything like that. I was just I was just throwing things in, just <laughs> but it was fun. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, as long I as mean, you're having fun, right? I like. I like to think that we got a lot better as we proceeded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh one of the one of the 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 pluses of of having a long running series is that you can see us get better as we go along. Um you know, I, I, I still think that a lot of the early strips, like there's very little continuity in them. In fact, I think we call it out in the third strip, um, about how there's just there's no there's nothing. It's just a bunch of random jokes. But um the downside is you get to see us get a lot better, which means we start, I mean, the art on some of those early strips is really rough. And uh, I, my dream is to one day go back and redraw all of Hawk and Croc classic and school days. And then uh, chapter three, the in your house era. Um, so everything from 2003 to 2005, but that's still over 300 comics. So that's just going to take a long time to do. Oh, all right. So, Andy, how did you come up with Hawk then? <laughs> yeah, so, um, boy, remember 20-something episodes when we had my cousin Alex Pickering on? Yeah. Uh, so Alex and I, obviously, because we're cousins, we grew up together. We were kids together. And um, in addition to making the silly movies that we referenced when he was on, uh, he and our respective brothers used to play superhero games with our Nerf Blasters. And the it started um, with... <sighs> Was it, is it Super Andy and Awesome Alex against Super Gary and the Tiny Avenger? Uh, Gary being Alex's brother, the Tiny Avenger being my brother um, with a silly superhero name. And because uh, he was the youngest, so he got to be the Tiny Avenger. And as the years went on, we all swapped around our code names and based them off other things that we thought were cool. So uh, Gary eventually became Scorpion and Alex became Kid America, like a younger Captain America. Uh, and Nighthawk came from uh, the combination of the new Warriors characters from Marvel Comics, Darkhawk and Night Thrasher. So Night Thrasher, Darkhawk, mostly just because I thought those names were cool and they would sound the you know, Nighthawk sounded cool. I later found out that it was a model of Honda motorcycle. And had I known that at the time, I wouldn't have used the name. <laughs> and then Darian, the, his first name is a intentionally misspelled version of uh, Tuxedo Mask's name from the Deke US dub of Sailor Moon. Because uh, I thought it was a cool name, and Darian and Nighthawk sounded cool together, so that's that's how that happened. And then, like the Fire Raven character, uh, you know, of course, when you're a teenage boy and you're writing, you know, your your superhero stories, coming up with stuff, like there's always the love interest character, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I had to do something with that, um, but a handful of characters are named after friends from junior high and high school. And and some of them, you know, they, they each helped come up with the names. So uh, Vulture and Black Falcon and Fire Raven are all named after uh, friends of mine, none of whom I talk to anymore, mm. um, which is unfortunate. Like, we're not that anything happened, just life has drifted us all apart from each other. Um, so <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's sort of this weird thing where, like, one of them uh, a couple of years ago actually mentioned to me, like, when I look up my name your comic is the first thing that comes up. And I, I wonder what that does to my chances with getting employed and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but yeah, basically it just came from me and me and my cousins and, and my brother, uh, running around shooting each other with Nerf guns when we were kids. That's, that's awesome. That is so cool. So I did Speaking check out of names. Can I throw in one detail that I don't know if I've mentioned before to anyone? Sure. sure. All of my characters, well, all of my earlier characters, anyway. Alan Devane, Gila Consuelos, Allie Gray, Damien Sword. All of their last names came from characters or actors 
from all my children. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's amazing. I did not realize that. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I was really bad at naming characters, so I was just like, I'll do yeah, that, sure. That's great. <laughs> it's a cool little nod right there. I watched it a lot as a kid. That's fantastic. Oh man. That's so cool. Look at this. We've we've been working together. We've been doing this comic yeah, for 17 years we've been doing this together. And we're still learning new stuff about each other's characters and everything. <laughs> That is so cool. I love that so much. So speaking of characters, so I, w- I did read a little bit of your guys' comic uh, as much as I could in the short amount of time that we had, but I have, but I did read through it. And, you know, I, I definitely, I, I, I definitely appreciate a lot of the characters. I think they're really funny. Um, Beth, I think is kind of low key my favorite just because she's just very, you know, very good representation of a female. Thank good you. job. <laughs> Strong, powerful female. Um, I do have a question of where exactly, uh, and I'm probably going to say this wrong, so I do apologize, um, but Gila Consuelos came from? <laughs> Who came up with that character? That's all Brandon. That That's all Brandon. Yeah. Well, initially, I was just making, I wanted to make an edgy rival for Croc, um, but then mm-hmm. when I brought him into the comic, I was just like... Yeah, what? but what if I made him hate Croc for literally no good reason? Just make him think Croc hates him based on nothing. And mm-hmm. I just thought that would be funny. Like, did you spit on my pizza? No. Why Why would you <laughs> think that? Why would you assume? I decided to make him Puerto Rican just because at the time I made him, there weren't, I didn't see a lot of Puerto Ricans in, in stuff. So I just made that choice. Um, the The hair was all Andy, though. The hair design um <laughs> yeah and his hair uh steph i don't know how far you got in but his hair starts as something that is approximately an actual hairstyle and sort of as as it went along it just turned into like vegeta's hair from dragon ball turned sideways uh and i don't i don't really know how that happened but <laughs> it just i don't know i i kind of i wanted to make everyone's hair a little more unique and, and a little bit less uh Mm -hmm. like one of the things about character design is you want to have a good silhouette for a character so that even in in no color if it's just their black shadow um or a white shadow against a black background you can still tell which character it is at a quick glance and um Mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of the characters and this is this is you know just how it happened like a lot of them were kind of just regular looking people and so as as we went along and i became a better artist and i started learning more about um good character design and whatnot i i did try to give everyone slightly different body types and different hairstyles and stuff um it's debatable as to how successful i was on some of that uh but you can you can definitely notice as it goes along like hawk gets bigger and croc gets skinnier um uh i intentionally and brandon i don't know if i ever mentioned this to you but like when uh later when Allie has uh she and croc's daughter like i started making her hips bigger because i that's a thing that happens to a lot of women after giving birth right um so like yeah like i i you know again it's it's any any sort of comic art is a little inconsistent Mm -hmm. but uh i always did try to pay Mm -hmm. attention to that sort of stuff so cool well you already answered another one of my questions which is how long you've been doing this um so i guess i'll just move on to the next one uh so (laughs) So obviously you guys have been doing this for quite a while. So do you guys have a favorite panel or series of panels that you've created over the time that just every now and then you look back on and say, man, that's still so good. I love that. Uh, um, I, I do. Ter- uh, yeah, please go ahead. My favorite comic is probably the one that took the least effort. It's the one where the whole comic is literally just bark falling over. <laughs> I saw that one. That yeah. was cute. <laughs> it's to, all it is is a stuffed gator, and he just sits there, and then in the final panel, he falls over. And I don't know how we came up with it. I don't know. I just think it's funny. That was that was one of those days we were on... Uh, it, it may have actually still been America Online and not uh, Instant Messenger at that time. But yeah, we, we would just sit down, and, and we would talk for hours about ideas for stuff to do. And some of them made it into the comic. Some of them we would think was hilarious and completely forget about. And uh, uh, yeah, that Bark comic, I think it's number 21. 
Um, it's it's real early on, but yeah, it's no dialogue, no background, just the copy and paste of Bark. Uh, yeah, it's that's great. Um, so I don't know, I you know, everyone is their own worst critic, so I I don't know that I can honestly give a favorite answer an answer for a favorite panel mm-hmm. uh the answer is whatever whatever my most recent one was um so hawk solo a hawk and croc story like all 10 pages of that there's even then there's some panels that i i wish i could have drawn better um but because that's the most recent stuff it's stuff that you know i'm it, it looks the best so that's my favorite but uh, my favorite story um is actually new hawk and croc chapter three the mystery of the dark raptor because there when i first created hawk um one of the things i wanted to do with him is i wanted to have an evil clone story right so you know like venom in spider-man mm-hmm. or I mean, name, name a thing and there's always an evil duplicate yeah and um the idea was that hawk was going to have this this uh all black costume with like his purple designs and and the big eyes and the hair and stuff and then someone was going to steal that outfit and start going around committing crimes and Brandon took that idea and made it better um, and integrated it into the Hawk and Croc world. And so we were at a point where Hawk was just at a really low point in his life. And uh, suddenly the Dark Raptor, which was Hawk's superhero identity, shows up, but with a different mask on and starts teaming up with Croc. But Croc notices like, hey, there's something a little wrong here. And uh, the whole thing gets revealed as you go ahead and read it. But like, it was one of those things where like I was kind of bummed that I had to draw it because I really just wanted to wait and read the entire thing (laughs) as it was done. Or like when it was like, I wanted to sit down and read the whole thing when it was finished, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I had to keep drawing it. So so the story was spoiled for me as I was, as I was making it. I'm very proud of that story. I think it might be the first time that we were able to stick with one, like one story for like 50 continuous pages instead of like going between different subplots. You know, that's that's true, actually. It might be the only one where it is kind of one story for the whole that whole arc. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I love it. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know that it's the most definitive Hawk and Croc story, um, but I, I think it might be my favorite one of all the stuff we've done. All right. Cool. Very cool. So aside from your guys's characters, Hawk and Croc, uh, is there an is there another character that you guys just you know, whenever they come on the panel or they or like you're like, oh, hey, in this story, we're going to bring this guy back in or girl back in. Uh, was there ever a character that you get that you guys just really enjoyed um, writing or drawing or just having involved in stories, uh, even if they are there every panel or like every other panel or if they're just, you know, a random occurrence once in a blue moon? <laughs> uh, Brendan, do you want to take this one first or should I? Well, I will say I love writing Gila and I hate writing Ministry because of how he talks. Oh, right. Because I had Ministry speak in rhyme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's fair. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, Beth slash Fire Raven became my favorite character over the course of writing the series or, or, or co-writing and drawing the series. Um, I don't know how that happened, but... Uh, that was also part of the part of the decision to take her out of the comic is because like she she she's kind of perfect like she mm-hmm. never really does anything wrong at any point and I I thought the series would be more interesting if we didn't have uh, effectively Captain America like what does the Avengers look like without Captain America and mm-hmm. you know what, what's the Justice League look like without Superman and Fire Raven had kind of become that character for us um so so that was part of my decision for for why we had to write her out and then we ended up writing her back in a couple chapters later anyways um uh well if you think about it she i think she's the only character who was a superhero before the comic even started right yeah yeah and we did i did go back and do the fire raven adventures um series which i actually did as an assignment in college uh uh, I got an A on that because I went way above and beyond um, what the expectation was. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it's it's. And then my other my other favorite character is probably Gila, um, just because of like Brandon said, he just hates everything for no good reason. He's just miserable all the time, <laughs> and it's so absurd. Um, 
But uh, I, I also appreciate the way that he's evolved, right? Like his first appearance, he thinks Croc's bitten his pizza. And the last time we see him, he's helping Hawk and Croc fight, you know, the evil monsters from hell and stuff. Um, and then decides to go off and have adventures with uh, their other friend, Damien Sword. And like, he becomes part of the gang. And that's a really cool evolution and transition for that character, I think. Um, also Bark, because I drew him literally exactly once and copied and pasted him every other time he appeared. And so uh, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was really nice to not have to draw him over and over again. <laughs> Love it. That's so cool. So, okay, I want to get off the, the, the topic of the comic for a second. Okay. And I'm curious, because I think you've told me this before, Andy, but I don't think our listeners have heard the story. But um, how? So we know the origin story for Hawk and Croc now, but what's the origin story for Andy and Brandon that then led to Hawk and Croc? <laughs> so how did you guys? How do you? How do you guys know each other? I guess. <laughs> uh man, I don't remember. Okay, so what I remember is is it was I want to say 1999, may have been later 1998. Um, and we both happened to be on America Online keyword video games message boards for Sonic the Hedgehog. And I don't remember who messaged who first, but uh, I thought Croc and Roll was the coolest screen name of anyone I'd seen on AOL up to that point. And um, uh, yeah, Brandon kept having a lot of good points about the Sonic universe as it was up to that point. And uh, I don't know, somehow we became friends off of that. I don't know, Brandon, if you remember any of those details any better. Um, well, it, it was late 99. Um, I think it was right. It was around the time or before Dreamcast came out. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and, um, I was 15, you were 17, I think. That sounds about right. And, uh, yeah, I was really into Sonic the Hedgehog and Street Fighter. And, um, <laughs> yeah. And when I found out that you liked Dan from street fighter <laughs> i was like oh i gotta tell this guy how much i like dan too and so <laughs> i it was it was just kind of stupid but then i i we just started talking a lot and about video games and then i just started writing stupid stuff just for you to read and i don't know just a dumb kid childhood friendship i guess yeah um and and we've never we've never met in person you you live in arizona and i live in south carolina yeah we've we've oh been gosh. friends online for nearly 20 years now well over 20, over 20 years, years. Actually. yeah yeah um yeah it's it's funny uh that we, yeah it, it still blows my mind that we've done 700 something pages of comics together um and a youtube thing i i, I realized stephanie I, I didn't link you to our our strip 250 is actually a video that we did that's on on my youtube account um i think it's, oh my I think it's the only video on the psycho and youtube account right now um it's not good <laughs> Like I, it's it's very not good. Yeah, I just rewatched it before uh, before we started recording this. We made it in 2007. It was the best that we could do at the time. But uh, mm -hmm. looking at it now, I mean, like the 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 screen ratio is all up. Like YouTube has changed its standards since we uploaded it in 2007. So like it doesn't even run. Like even if you open it to full screen, it doesn't run on full screen. And I, I, unfortunately, all of the original files for it are lost on a, a hard drive that I don't have anymore. So I, I, I'd have to, we'd have to recreate the entire thing from scratch and the amount of like, it was cool for our four year anniversary of the comic and for strip 250 to do all of that work. Now um, I, it's just not worth it for the, the bad, <laughs> the bad jokes that we did through the whole thing. I have, I have to warn you of something though. Yeah. Crocs Canon voice is not what you're probably expecting. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll just say okay. that. <laughs> okay. No, that that at least me curious because obviously you know just like looking at the panel, you, you know, I mean like when you read a book or you read a comic, you kind of just naturally make the characters' voices in your head. So now I'm curious. So, oh my gosh, that's that's great. So that's that's crazy that you guys have never actually you know met in person or anything, but you've been doing this for so long. Yeah, yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> yeah. It has been. Well, that's awesome. That's so cool. So, 
So we talked about, you know, kind of the origin story and kind of um, what was, okay, so actually, so my next question is, what was the longest series that you guys wrote for Hawk and Croc? Like, what, what, like which one took you guys the longest amount of time to write? Oh, that's a good question. Um, or, or it's just long in the sense of that it goes on for so many panels. <laughs> well, I don't know if it counts as a whole series, but just leading up to the first Quagmire battle, I guess that whole thing would be the longest, wouldn't it? Uh, technically, yeah. It's it. That's 162 comics from from the very beginning until they killed Quagmire, and then we took the summer off, um, and and then came back and did the high school stuff. Um, and that was yeah, 162 comics. But then again, that's not really like one co- one uh like co- cohesive story, though. Right. Cause the, it because we wrote it differently back then. Yeah. Yeah, it was very much what are we doing this week? It was throwing spaghetti at the wall, you could yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. I, the one that probably took the longest to write would have been New Hawk and Croc, right? All five chapters of that. Um which was we we had kind of stopped yeah. doing it for a little while like while I was running Comic Zone. Um and and we had we'd had some other side stuff that we had done. Um and kind of like the the original series ends with croc and alley moving away and so because we figured you can't have hawk and croc without hawk and croc right um so mm-hmm. we came up with a reason for, for croc and alley to come back and um they suddenly have a daughter now and we never we've never really explored that i mean we there's there's mentions in it but we've never really explored their time in florida together uh, and i think that could be a fun story we could do at some point but but doing new hawk and croc like we were like yeah, let's do five chapters of 50 pages. It'll take us five years to do. And it took us six because we did uh, Hawk and Croc Generation 2, which Brandon mentioned earlier about uh, their daughters in the future. But yeah, the 250 pages of Hawk and Croc, uh, new Hawk and Croc, it's the longest. And the last two chapters, we rewrote a few times. Um, at one point, it was there was going to be a zombie invasion. And uh, basically, like Walking Dead was doing zombies better than anything we could have done at the time. So we were like, yeah, let's not do... <laughs> Like let's not let's not do that. Uh, Plus, it's a lot of drawing to make a lot of zombies. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you if you go through the panels that I did where there's a bunch of background ninjas, I only drew seven and copied and pasted them over and over again, and then would just do like the one or two that were in the foreground. Um, no one has ever called me out on that, so I don't know if anyone ever noticed. Uh, I appreciate no one calling me out on it. So let me be the first to call myself out like an idiot. Uh, (laughs) um, The, okay, actually the, the correct answer, the correct answer for the one that's taken the longest to write is the one that's unfinished. And that's Hawk and kid. Um, Alex Pickering, who, you know, my cousin, we've talked about earlier uh, while, while Hawk and Croc was on hiatus or whatever, Alex thought it'd be fun to do a story set in the Hawk and Croc continuity about Hawk and Kid America and uh, Scorpion and the Tiny Avenger. And so he wrote, he started writing it and I was drawing it. And then um, just real life got in the way. And I think we did about 30 pages of it and it's not finished. Um, it's not finished being written. It's not finished being drawn. Like even the last couple of pages, I don't think I finished drawing. Um, it's currently not on the website. It's completely missing. He and I have talked about going back and finishing it, but mm-hmm. we started that in 2009 and it's currently the end of 2020. So oh. I'm going to go with 11 years being the longest to write a story. <laughs> Jeez. But Brandon had nothing to do with it other than giving us the okay to do it and use some of his characters in it. So Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So I don't know. I don't know how much that counts. <laughs> <laughs> no, that definitely that definitely puts into perspective for probably people who who you know when real life does get in the way of creative projects and stuff. That definitely just puts in mind that like, yeah, and sometimes you get to it. Sometimes it's still sitting in the corner gathering dust. So, um, but yeah, yeah, and and I mean since then, since then, since since Hawk and Kid happened, um like Alex has gotten married and had a kid. Uh, We've both changed jobs several times. Um, You know, like we talked about when, when he was on, like he's winning awards. He's actually won more awards since we had him on for screenplays that he's written. Um, You know, he's, he's got movies in production now. So like we just, I mean, as fun as doing a a comic people can read online for free is, you know, we have to pay the bills. We have to take care of our, our friends and family. We have to take care of real life. So, um, you Mm -hmm. know, as much as I, 
we would both love to just do that comic all the time. Sometimes it's just not feasible to do that at, in this moment right now. Yeah. Yeah, fair. So, so you guys mentioned that uh, the last thing you put, the last thing you guys put out was in 2018. Um, I guess, I mean, maybe without spoiling or anything, or just kind of like where your thoughts are at this moment, like, well, what's the, what is the future of Hawk and Croc looking like right now? Yeah. Uh, good question. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, ideally, uh, Alex and I, like I said, Alex and I have talked about finishing Hawk and Kid. Um, I would love to go back and finish that. Um, but, uh, and I'm not, I'm not calling him out here. Like I said, man, real life is, is more important than doing a free comic. So, mm-hmm. uh, oh, yeah. but I told him basically I'll do it once he's finished writing it. And, uh, I, I'll probably go back and redraw those 30 pages because my art style has evolved since then. Um, uh, Brandon and I, we've talked about rebooting everything and splitting it up. So it is more, what I had in mind for Hawk and, and the uh, Raptors characters and then what Brandon had in mind for, for his characters. Um, I have a loose idea of kind of what I want to do, but Brandon has got some really cool ideas for um, things he wants to do with Croc and Gila and Damien and some new characters. So uh, yeah, I'm going. Um, yeah. I've, I've uh, actually got a lot of ideas and um I'm going to take old characters and use them in, I think, some pretty interesting new ways. Yeah, yeah. Some of the stuff you've told me about sounds pretty cool, uh, and I'm excited to read those stories and uh, uh, to eventually draw them, (laughs) hopefully. Um, uh, Yeah, and... and um, My stuff, I don't know. We'll we'll see. Um, I, I would love to have uh fire raven back and to be able to do more stuff with her not that i think that killing her was a mistake i think that it was the right decision for the overall good of the comic um but i do miss that character i miss i miss drawing her i miss being able to have her in stories um Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that we we did decide is you know when a character dies they're dead like there's questionably one exception um I guess Quagmire, <laughs> Theory Quagmire, who's a demon from hell. Like he gets killed and comes back, but he's a demon. He doesn't fit by natural rules. Um, Jackie Nightblade uh, seemingly dies in the original Battle of Quagmire, um, but we—I don't know if we ever mentioned it in the comic. Like he, he never—he never actually died. He just got run through with a sword and survived. Um, so I don't know. Uh, every time Nin- every time Ninja King died and came back, it was a different one. Right, right. We definitely went into that. Um, our friend Wesley helped us draw a comic. Uh, he, he did a couple mm. stories for us. One of them was Bank Robert Goes to Hell, where the bank robber character, who we jokingly named Bank Robert because it was this stupid joke, um, he, he goes to meet up with his buddy, the Ninja King, and it turns out the, the crown ninja are uh, crowning a new Ninja King. Um, so... Yeah, uh, like Brandon said, every time Ninja King shows up uh, after it seems like he died, it's because there's a new one. Um, I, you know, there's there's too much to potentially do. Um, mm-hmm. there, there's so much we could do that if if I didn't have to worry about paying bills, <laughs> if I could just work on Hawk and Croc forever. Um, I think I think I have enough notes that we, I could do probably another four or five years of stories, no problem doing you know a couple of pages a week. Um, but you know, again, real life gets in the way. I have to do my job. You know, we have uh, uh, Atomic Monsoon here, which you know is ending. But like, I'm I'm going to be doing more podcasting after that. Um, Brandon has his real life job, like, so we'll see. Mm-hmm. All right, so. How, so obviously you you guys have everything on hawkandcroc.com uh a in very the, long-winded non-committal answer <laughs> yeah um and i know that you andy you sent me the link for for hawk and croc stuff on psychoandy.com but uh how many how many people like are, how, how, do, how many people have you guys know of or at least are you able to see the, the stats of how many people have read your guys's comic or is that number just a complete mystery and you have no idea <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm sure there is a way to, to look it up, but uh, I've kind of never wanted to know. Um, 
we've had very little interaction with our fan base. I mean, outside of immediate friends and family who, you know, um, we, we tell them like, Hey, we're, we're doing comics again, please check them out. And like, they'll tell us about it. Um, but overall, like, I, I honestly have no idea. I have run into some people that when I mention in passing that I do it, they're like, Oh, I used to read that. Whatever happened to that? And I'd be like, Oh, well, we're doing it again. And then, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it, it, you know that that happened a couple times ever. Um, so yeah, don't know, don't care. Right. I I honestly don't want to know because I just want to I just want to keep doing the comic that we make, and I want to make our comic. I don't I don't want to cater to what our audience expects necessarily. You know that's that is completely fair. Uh, I would I was just curious because I know that you guys have been doing it for so long. I was just curious if you knew how many people. Um, but I, I definitely applaud you for not really, you know, caring a whole lot in that aspect. I know a lot of people worry a lot about what their viewers or their readers or their listeners or whoever think of what they create. Um, and also really highly depend on numbers. I mean, look at a lot of the social media influencers of today. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, that's that, that, I was just curious. And I was curious to see what you guys uh, if you guys knew or not. So, yeah. Um, all right, cool. Uh, I got kind of like one more question, and then I will just open the floor. Um, but I guess my last question is, uh, have you guys ever brought these characters to real life? Like, have you ever, you know, decided one year for Halloween, you're like, I'm going to be Hawk, or I'm going to be Croc, or anything like that? Like, have you ever got, have you guys ever just made them come off the page uh, in into the real world? Uh, Brandon, have you? Uh, no, I don't have any artistic ability at all. So even if I wanted to, I don't think I could. <laughs> okay, so uh, yes, uh, uh, I have um, twice and a fan did once. Um, so for Halloween in, I want to say 2004, uh, I dressed up as Jackie Nightblade, which was easy because his outfit was based on clothes. I, he wears a leather jacket, jeans, and uh, some beetle boots that I used to own. Um, so that was easy because it was all, you know, I bought some plastic swords from Walgreens, um, went to a Halloween party and people were like, who are you dressed as? I was like, oh, my comic character and, and pulled up a picture and they're like, oh, that's cool. Um, uh, and then when I went back to visit Alex and his family uh, with my brother one year, we intentionally went and got out, like we got outfits that looked like the way that we had designed the characters. So purple shirt, black workout pants. Um I did. I did. And I had some sunglasses and some fingerless gloves. Like I, I have dressed as Hawk just to mess around with my cousins, um, had to have Nerf Wars as an adult. Uh, but there was one year. It was 2014 at Phoenix Comic Con. Uh, one of my friends from out of town happened to be coming to that convention, and uh, she wore a pair of Bret Hart sunglasses. She wore a Hawk shirt that she bought off my Redbubble store, and she cosplayed as Hawk at Phoenix Comic Con. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, while we were in the middle of, of doing New Hawk and Croc, so that was super fun. That's so cool. That's awesome. Wow, that's 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 really that's really 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 cool. So, yeah. That's awesome. So, any anything else you guys want to just add or say about you know Hawk and Croc stories, funny stories you guys want to tell of just like shenanigans of creating it? Like, just I want to hear more because it sounds because it sounds like this was a really fun project that you guys have been working on. Obviously, because you've been working on it for so long, but just uh, tell me more awesome things that have happened when creating this comic. <laughs> um, man, yeah, it's I don't know. It's it's been it's been fun. It's been uh interesting to learn what works and what doesn't in a comic um you know one of the things that i I have picked up talking to other comic creators other comic writers reading books about how to write comics is there's no right or wrong way to do it like as long as your story is clear to the audience as long as it comes across that's the correct way to do it and so um I've gotten to a chance to do a couple of other, you know, like short stories. I did like a 10 page story for an anthology a couple of years ago. Um, it, it's, it's been interesting to learn how, like the way Brandon and I work works for us, mm-hmm. the way that Brandon and I work may not work for other people. Um, but because that's the thing that I've done the most, that's the thing I'm most used to. So working with other creators, other writers, um, it, especially people who are coming from like the world of film, like screenwriting and comic writing are two entirely different things. And it's been 
fascinating for me to watch people write screenplays and try to turn it into a comic because it doesn't work. Um, because in, in a, in a screenplay you're, you're writing, Hey, the character goes here and does this and that's your scene. But in a comic that has to be at least two panels. And oftentimes I find screenwriters write that as one panel. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, I, I can't, I can't show somebody moving. This is a still image. Um, so, so that's been fun. Um, getting to work on my art and become a better illustrator, better cartoonist throughout, you know, the, the 17 years we've been doing this, whatever. Um, that's been super cool. Getting feedback from, from other artist friends and uh, family members and stuff. That's been great. Getting to collaborate. We've had, uh, I mentioned Wesley came in and did some comics. We had some other friends that, again, just unfortunately through life, you know, I'm not in contact with anymore, but a couple other guest artists and stuff here and there. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's been, it, it's been cool to create a thing with my friends and to have this piece of work that uh, is, is 90 something percent Brandon and I, but, uh, it, you know, it's been fun to include other people in that, in that uh, as well. Awesome. Super cool. One thing that's been cool is that with every comic I've written, I've learned something. And, um, you know, there are a lot of early comics where there are jokes that I wish I had, that today I wish I hadn't made. There are, like, we portrayed the characters in ways that I wish we hadn't at that yeah. time, looking back. There are, um, you know, there's characters that I wish we had developed better. Char um storylines that i wish we had maybe done a different way or written um mm -hmm. in a different way i'm excited that next year i'm get, going to get a chance to maybe develop a um a new idea from the beginning and i'm just really excited to see what i can do with it yeah yeah to that point brandon um definitely there are i mean we started in 2003 i was i was 20 brandon was 19 uh, or so uh, we're, we're a, a year and a half off in age from each other. Um, and listen, we're two, you know, <laughs> cisgendered heterosexual Caucasian males. You know, we, we were raised seeing the world a certain way. And between 2003 and 2020, um, we have learned a lot more about the way the world works, you know, from, from our, our relatively sheltered worldviews to um, seeing a lot of other people's points of view and, um, I don't, nothing that we did was intentionally insensitive. Nothing that we did was intentionally harmful. Um, but there are some things that looking back, I can see like, oh, this could be construed as a little sexist, or this could be construed as a little racist. Um, again, that was never the intent. Um, we do actually kind of poke fun of it. Uh, there are some early cop, uh, comics where Hawk and Croc call Gila Mexican and he's Puerto Rican. And like, we have him call them out on that. So like we were aware, you know, and, and like Brandon said, there weren't a lot of Puerto Rican characters. So we, it was good that we included that. Um, we did include our first homosexual character in the school days arc. Unfortunately, we portrayed her as kind of a villain. So again, like, you know, Oh good. Our one gay character is an asshole. Like that's, that's a mistake. Um, yeah. I regret that so much. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. It's it. But again, it was just, you know, the fact that we included a gay character was ahead of what most other webcomics were doing. So uh, it's not perfect. There are some things that, you know, with the the benefit of hindsight, we can look back and be like, OK, we should have done this differently. Um, and so, like Brandon said, one of the things about about the idea of rebooting everything, one of the reasons we came to that conclusion was so that we could fix those mistakes rather than rather than try and go back and retcon everything and be like, Oh, well actually this wasn't a problem because like, yeah, we were kids who didn't know what we were doing. The chance to go back and, or the chance to, to make new things um, and not have that hanging over us anymore is appealing. That's good. That's good. Um, yeah. Well, awesome. So uh, Andy, how much, how much time do we have left? I think we've, do we cover most of the episode? Yeah. I think, uh, I think that's gonna, I think that's, that's about it. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I think, I think we're, we're right about at time. Nice. So Andy and Brandon, where can everybody find obviously Hawk and Croc, but also 
I mean, if Brandon, if you have any social media that people can find you at, where where can you be found on the socials media? Not really anywhere. <laughs> Sorry. You're good. <laughs> Andy? Yeah, we do have, there is, there is a Hawk and Croc uh, Twitter account that we just don't use. Like we, we specifically were using it to post updates. Um, but since there haven't been any updates in a while, there's there's nothing there. If you want to follow Hawk and Croc on Twitter, you can. There's a Hawk and Croc fan page on Facebook. But again, it's kind of inactive. Um, Hawkandcroc.com, everything spelled out, H-A-W-K-A-N-D-C-R-O-C.com. Um, and, um, like, like I said at the beginning, there, there were some issues with the server and everything. Um, but we were pretty sure we got those figured out. We are working on making sure everything gets re-uploaded. Um, so hopefully by the time you hear this, everything will be back up and you can go back and look at some really early ugly art that I did and watch me get better. And you can read some comics that were a little problematic and hopefully you'll think they get better. (laughs) Um, yeah, yeah. And then stay tuned because uh, hopefully in 2021, if real life allows for it, we will uh, have some new adventures, including um, you know Brandon's idea for for taking some stuff over. Hopefully, we'll get I'll get to do some Hawking Kid, and if not, uh, maybe I'll be doing some other stuff uh, based on previous ideas. So awesome! So obviously, you guys can find us Atomic Monsoon on twitter and facebook uh at atomic monsoon you can also find us on instagram at at atomic underscore monsoon because that's a thing uh you can also email us one last time uh at atomic monsoon at gmail.com and tell us what you guys liked because we want to talk about it on episode 100 uh check out our Redbubble, youtube thank you defim records andy did i forget anything uh no no you you good job you nailed it yay um i do want to say real quick uh Definitely, if you're listening to this now and you do have anything you want to get into Atomic Monsoon 100, do it now. Like, as soon as you're done listening to this, hit your email, email us atomicmonsoon at gmail.com and let us know anything you want to tell us about the show that you want read on the air because we're going to be recording this soon. And uh, hopefully you are able to get in and get your get your thoughts across to us. Well, Thank you, uh, thank you, Andy and Brandon, for you know obviously coming on and talking about Hawk and Croc. This, is, this has been a lot of fun. I I've definitely learned more, and I'm excited to go read some more Hawk and Croc later. Thank you. Yay! You got a new fan in me. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, thank you guys for for telling us all about this, and thank you, Brandon, for coming on. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, this has been uh, this has been fun. Well, awesome. Any final words before we part? <laughs> no. Read more comics. Especially our comics.